AI voice agents are one of the highest requested solutions I see amongst real estate agents, and it's not too much of a surprise why. If you have a busy schedule keeping up with clients, then a lot of people just don't have time to be qualifying, setting appointments, and bouncing back and forth between applications while they're trying to serve the clients that they already do have. And in today's video, I'm going to be using Retail AI and Make.com to be setting up a simple voice agent that can be used to help real estate agents qualify leads and book appointments completely on autopilot. Now, when it comes to actually using your voice agent, assuming that you have it set up correctly, it could follow any set of instructions and do any number of tasks for you in the background without you having to even take the slightest step away from your daily routine. And if you have a high volume of clients calling in, or if you rely on a lot of appointment setting to actually do business, having your own custom voice agent could potentially be a game changer for your business. So before we actually get into the build, let me show you guys a quick demo of how this voice agent works. And if you want to stick around after the demo, I'll take you step by step through how I built this agent so you guys can understand how it all works together. Hi, I was looking around your guys' website and I saw a few homes that I might be interested in touring, but I wanted to get in contact with your agency first. Absolutely. We'd be happy to help you schedule a viewing. Do you have any specific homes in mind or would you like me to go through some options with you? Um, I would actually like to maybe talk to an agent to see what kind of options that you guys have. Great! I can put you in touch with one of our qualified agents who can assist you in finding the perfect home. Can I ask for your name and a good contact number to reach you at? Yeah, my name is Mike and you could reach me at 541 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great, I've got that information down. Can I also ask if there's any specific price range or location you would like me to keep in mind while searching for potential properties? Yeah, my price range is going to be around $800,000 and I was hoping to get a home somewhere on the west side of town. Understood. I'll make sure to pass that information on to our agents. They'll be able to provide you with some great options within your price range and desired location. Can you please provide me with a few date and time options that work for you? Um, if you guys have openings this Friday around noon, I would, that would actually work pretty well for me. Great, I'll go ahead and check our agent availability for Friday at noon. While I'm doing that, is there any additional information that you'd like me to the agent know about your preferences? Um, no, nothing at this moment, but thank you. You're welcome. Let me check with the agents and get back to you shortly with some options. Okay, that sounds great. Great. I've looked through our available agents and I have good news. We have an agent who is able to meet with you on Friday at noon. Would you like to move forward with booking that appointment? Yes, I would like to. Perfect. Um, I'll go ahead and schedule the appointment for you then. Can you provide me with your email address so I can send you a confirmation and details for the meeting? Sure thing. My email is mike.s at gmail.com. Great. I've made a note of your email address. I'll send over a confirmation email with the details of your appointment shortly. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Um, that'll be all. Thank you. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure assisting you today. If you have any other questions or concerns in the future, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day! Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed that demo, and I hope it kind of gave you a good idea of what this agent is capable of. So on the back end of that actual agent, when it comes to actually booking appointments, I have this also set up to update your CRM on the back end of this. So every single bit of information that's relevant for each caller, assuming that they're qualified, will be collected from the call, saved to variables, and then updated within your CRM. And this is all gonna be accomplished via an automation workflow that I have built into this voice agent in Retail AI. So in case you're not familiar yet, Retail AI is one of those new up and coming voice agent platforms. And at this point in early 2025, it's actually gaining a pretty decent amount of popularity. And if you haven't tried it out yet, I definitely recommend you do so. But signing up is completely free, and once you actually get into your retail account, you'll have a few options to choose from when it comes to actually building agents. So for this particular agent, I just decided to build a single prompt agent because this is a relatively simple use case and there isn't all that much going on behind the scenes. And once you enter your dashboard here in retail, you're going to see a few things going on here. So 
First up, you're going to have your agent type here at the top. You also have your retail LLM ID, as well as your cost per minute, according to the model specifications that you've chosen here. And lastly, up here, we also have an estimated latency. This is essentially how long it takes for the model to respond to your caller every time they finish speaking. This also tends to change depending on what models you're using and what your settings look like. Now, when it comes to actually setting this agent up, I have mine running on GPT-40, and there are quite a few other options around here to play around with. And if you happen to be on a budget, 40 mini tends to do pretty well in terms of performance and it also balances that with a pretty reasonable price. And in the end, if you want to even use 40, which tends to be the best performing model, it's not going to be all that expensive. And especially if you're currently hiring somebody to manage all these calls for you, even using the highest end AI models is going to be far cheaper than hiring a human employee. So before we actually get into any of the other settings for this voice agent, let's take a look at the prompt. Now I have this particular agent set up to be a charismatic, efficient, and friendly agent for a real estate agency called West Hills Realty. I made sure to outline the agent's main responsibilities here, which were to determine lead qualification based off of a predefined criteria, and to also seamlessly book appointments while qualifying leads, and then updating all that info in our company CRM. And the actual task for this agent is actually building off of that role. And in addition to that, it's also ensuring that all qualified leads are being booked directly in the call. And regardless of whether a lead is qualified or not, we're still updating the CRM with their information in case that happens to be relevant later on down the line. And now when it comes to actual specifics, this is where the actual parameters are going to come in that are going to allow us to actually qualify the leads based off of this agency's specific requirements. And this is where you're going to include any key details that you're going to want to make sure the agent covers during the conversation. And in this case, I chose six different parameters. And among those, I have the budget, which is gonna document how much the buyer wants to spend for their particular property. And for the actual parameter, I have ensured that the agent will actually disqualify anyone who has a budget lower than $400,000, which is just a fictitious requirement for this particular agency. What this is set to prove is that you can input more detail within these parameters instead of explicitly stating a question that you just want your agent to ask your callers. Now, next up, we actually have the timeline. We actually wanna know when the buyer is trying to make their ideal transaction. And in this case, I've also set up to prioritize leads that, that want to transact within the next three to six months. And next up, if it's relevant, determine the type of preferred property if the user is actually asking for something specific. So in this case, the agent didn't actually bring that up because I guess it didn't find that relevant within our current conversation. If it were to arise as a subject, it'll collect either a single family home, condo, townhouse, or whatever type of property the lead is looking to buy. Next up, we have location, which is pretty self-explanatory. Then next up, we have pre-approval. And in brackets, I have here, if applicable, because for every lead that calls in, it won't always be relevant to ask if they're pre-approved. If they are, then this will act as a strong indicator that will come in handy when it comes to actually updating our CRM. And finally, it's going to ask for the caller's email, which is going to be used to help book the appointment and actually send a follow-up to them after everything's been set up and the call is finished. And within the specifics, I've included a couple of extra details here when it comes to actually setting the appointment. Now I actually had to refine my prompt a little bit here because during our demo call that you just saw, the agent actually didn't get this first step completely right. I instructed it to offer two to three available appointment times according to the calendar that it has access to. Instead, it asked me what my preferred times are. And although this does work for actually booking an appointment, as a builder, you tend to want to have more control over how the agent asks and how it gathers information. So when you're actually going through and writing this prompt, you can either give it one of these options. And of course, I also included the check calendar availability function, which is the tool that the agent is actually going to use to confirm that whatever agreed upon time is actually available for a call. And when it comes to actually booking the appointment, I have another function here called the book call function, which is actually going to set that call up with the user's information. And then finally, once the call is finished, all the relevant data will be sent to the agency CRM using a third function, which is update CRM. So let's wrap up the rest of our prompt here. And then after this, I'll show you guys how those three functions are set up. So next up, I actually have a context section inside of this prompt, which is going to help to give the agent a little bit of background on what role it's playing here and where the leads that it's talking to are actually coming from. And you can include as much detail in here as you want in order to give the proper amount of background for your particular agent. But in this case, I decided to keep things pretty simple here. And lastly, we actually have an example conversation here. And although this isn't identical to what the agent is going to be following for every single conversation, it's going to be pretty close. In the end, it's just designed to give it a rough idea of what it can expect when it comes to actual conversations that it's going to be having. And over here at the bottom, the way I have this particular agent set up, the AI will remain silent until the user speaks first. But you can also have this set up for the AI to actually initiate the conversation if that makes more sense for your particular agent. 
All right, so next up, I'm gonna take you guys through the functions that I have for this agent. And those can be found right here in this functions tab. And there's actually a lot of built-in functions that make building a lot easier for people, especially if you're not experienced with doing connections to other software. For this example, you can actually have both of the check calendar availability and book on calendar functions built completely within retail. I was able to set up the check calendar availability directly within the platform, but since I was having an issue when it came to actually setting up the book on calendar function, I just created that one externally. And if you actually wanna set these up, it's actually very simple. All you need to do is give your function a name, give it an optional description just so you can kind of understand what's going on here, and then copy your API key from cal.com along with your event ID and your time zone. Now it's completely free to sign up for Cal if you don't already use it, but if you use a different scheduling software, build this function as an external automation in a different platform like Make. But for the time being, it's actually very easy to set these all up. And it's really cool that they have these natively built into retail so you don't actually have to go out and create brand new automations for a lot of these ones that recur often. But when it comes to this last update CRM function, I actually did build that one externally in Make because there is no way to directly integrate that within retail. And in order to do that, all I did was add a function and then go to custom here. And then this is also pretty straightforward to set up. All you need to do is name your function, include a short description of precisely what it does, which in this case was to take all of the information from the call, use it to update our CRM. And this URL here is where the actual webhook goes for your function. And I'll show you guys what that looks like in a minute here. And this parameters is actually optional, but if you have specific data, it's gonna be coming in and you wanna give the model an idea of what to expect when it comes to transferring information, it would be pretty wise to actually include your JSON schema in here, but of course you don't have to do it. And for this case, I actually didn't set this part up. And the last setting in here is to choose whether or not you want the agent to speak during execution or to speak after. Now let's take a look at the actual update CRM function inside of Make. And this is an extremely simple one. The entire thing is built off of three modules and you really don't need all that much to get it set up. The neat thing about this one though, is instead of ending with a webhook response, I actually ended it with a Slack message so that your team gets a notification on Slack when a new lead actually books an appointment with you guys. So this is gonna be great for communication and for follow-up because it allows you to get back to them a lot quicker and it keeps your communications a lot more organized. So as far as setup goes, all you're gonna to wanna to do here is create a custom webhook. And this address right here directly below the connection is what you're gonna actually paste into that URL right here in this space. And once the data structure has actually been determined there, all you're going to do is click save and then we'll be adding our actual CRM connection. In this case, I was just using a simple Google Sheet to collect all of the information from our calls and to keep everything organized. But of course you could use HubSpot or Salesforce or whatever CRM you, you prefer to use. And within the actual setup, all I did was connect it to my specific sheet. And then when it comes to actually inserting your values, you're gonna be taking the variables that come in from your webhook and inserting them into each field. And for this example, all I have is placeholders because this automation is just a skeleton to kind of show you how this stuff works. But each of these variables would be coming in from retail. They would be getting received by make through this webhook. And then this mapping feature allows you to take all of those variables and insert them into to whatever field that you want within your CRM. And once you have that set up, all I did was add a Slack module here to actually create a message to send to our team. Now within the actual body of the message, I included a few of those variables just so that the message would be more personalized. And once the team actually receives it, they'll be receiving actual information that's coming in through their CRM so they kind of know what to expect. Now, once all of this is set up and saved, it'll be completely ready to go with your retail voice agent. And of course you could add more modules off the back end of this if you want to make your, your communications a little bit more customized, or if you want to trigger another workflow depending on what sort of calls you have coming in or depending on whether you have a buyer or a seller coming in. But that's about it for this make automation. As far as the actual settings go within retail, you have a few other categories here that you can also use to customize your agent a bit farther. For example, you can add a knowledge base here to give it access to documents so it can answer questions. You can also change your speech settings. For example, adding a background noise. You have a lot of options here that could actually allow your call to come across a little bit more authentic. And this would be something that would also be worth experimenting with depending on what your particular use case is. Now for responsiveness, this is how fast the agent responds after the user is actually finished speaking. This setting right here, if you have it all the way to one is gonna be the fastest response, but if you take it down to zero, it's gonna be the slowest response, of course. And this is another thing that would be worth experimenting with. If you keep it at one, which is the default, it'll keep the pace of the conversation easier when you're actually testing in the beginning, and then you can refine that as you go. Now for the rest of these, none of these were really relevant when it came to this actual build, but if you guys 
are interested in seeing any of these more in depth, you could let me know down in the comments. But as far as this actual agent goes, that about covers everything I wanted to touch on in this video. As far as the actual agent build goes, the prompting and the functions were pretty much everything I wanted to get covered within this build. And my goal here was to just show you how you can get your own AI voice agent set up that can just qualify leads for you on autopilot while you're busy with other tasks and then update your CRM while also booking appointments for you. Now just for a real estate use case, this can be an incredibly useful tool for people, especially if you're running a larger team where you have multiple people running multiple listings and everybody has their own calendar to set up. Once things get more complicated and you have busier schedules, a lot of these voice tools end up displaying their value a lot more clearly. But I hope you guys got some value out of this. I hope you were able to follow along with all of these instructions. And with all of that said, if you made it to the end, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.